back. In this tutorial we will build the logic for handling when the ball goes out of bounds. So in particular we will be stopping and repositioning the ball and we'll also need to continually check if the ball is in bounds. So let's get started. We can go into the ball script and we want to create a bool. Public bool is in play. And we can just subdivide that into, let's call it functional fields. Okay, so when we serve the ball, we want, well, we can start off, I guess, by saying that it, the ball will start off not in play. And when we serve it, it is in play. So, is in play equals true. Okay, the next, so the first thing we need to do is we need to be able to detect when the ball goes out of bounds. There are a couple of ways you could do this. You could set up a trigger collider outside the... Let me just show you. You could set up a trigger collider here and detect when the ball crosses it. That's one way of doing it. Or you could also just query the, transform, the ball's transform, the X position, and if the X position is less than this paddle or greater than this paddle, you can tell then that it's out of bounds. So we'll go with that. We'll go with that way. Um, so in the ball script, in the update method, we will create a method called check if in bounds. So this will be called every frame. Okay, checks uh, once per frame if the ball is still within the play area. Okay, so public void check if in bounds. So let's just have a quick think about what all we need to do here. Um, we will need to figure out, well, we have the balls transform, so we can determine its position from that. Let's just look at the transform of these paddles. So the paddle on this side, its x position is minus 8.64. So if, if we say that the, the if the ball uh, x position is less than say minus nine or minus nine and a half um, it's considered out of play and on this side 8.6 so if we say 9.5 if it's greater than 9.5 it's gone out of play on this side okay so let's go and look at that now so if ball transform and we're interested in the position and the x value of the position. So if that's less than minus 9, we'll say, or ball transform dot position is greater than 9, then the ball is considered out of play. We didn't add in the X there. So if ball less than or greater than 9 is out of play. So we can set set ball out of play. So is in play equals false. So it'll no longer check this method. Actually we do need to do that. We need to say if is in play check if in bounds. Now this is something that would need to be in place for score because once it goes out of play it will increase the score by once by one every frame. 
So we need to, once it goes out, we need to say that immediately it's no longer in play. Stop running this method. Okay, so when we when we do that, when the ball goes out of play, we need to, we need to think about what we're going to do with that. Um, we're going to stop the ball and we're going to reposition it. So let's create a new so stop and reposition the ball. So stop and reposition ball. And we'll create this method down here. Stops the ball returns it to origin serves. So it's public method. It's not returning anything. And it's called stop and reposition ball. So the first thing we need to do is we need to, to stop any movement. So to that we need to access the ball's rigid body and its velocity equals vector two dot zero. Now that's shorthand for vector two. It's the same as um, new vector two. Zero, zero. So it sets the velocity on the x and the y axis to zero. And we want to reposition it. So to do that we want to access the transform to access the transition or the the position. So ball transform dot position equals uh, no vector to dot zero. This also works here because it's uh, shorthand for zero zero, and that's where the ball should be. It should be, it should be in the center. So the position is zero zero zero. So we can just use that. And this isn't going to work very well right now. But let's just for continuity, we'll just serve the ball. We're going to need to change this later. Okay. So let's just run this now. I'll just move out of the way. So it, once the ball goes out, serves it again. It's perhaps a little too quick. Well, if the serve is, maybe we should give the user some warning that the serve is about to happen. So that's that for the, this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one.